I'm just saying that. Um, I don't actually have a video clip for this. We're going to skip. I thought I'd find one. If I do, I'll put it in. Okay, let's talk about precipitation. So this is important. Is um, what causes the uh, certain places to be moist and some to be dry. Well, it has to do with prevailing winds. And these, of course, are caused by the Coriolis effect that we talked about in a previous podcast. And so we've got these winds and these winds. And basically, if you've got, like, let's take here uh, South America right here. We've got some wind coming off the Atlantic Ocean, kind of hammering this whole area, this northern uh, portion of South America. And since it's coming over the air, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to make this a wet place. And of course, what happens here? You probably know that this is the Amazon jungle. Now, conversely, see, and there's also some serious mountains right here, the Andes Mountains that uh, are on the spine of South America. And right through here, we have the wind moving away. And interestingly enough, you have this rainforest, which is super, super wet. And then right here, you have the driest place in the entire world, um, even though it's on the coast because it has to do with the prevailing winds. What direction do the winds flow? When they flow in a particular direction, from the ocean to the land, it's going to make the place wet. So if you get it wet, you're going to, yeah. So it's all about the moisture uh, of the prevailing winds. A prevailing wind, by the way, is a wind that blows more often from one direction. Now, is this the way the wind always blows? Of course not, but it kind of blows there on average, okay? Um, so let's look at precipitation and climate. Here's an interesting thing. Why is the Sahara Desert so dry? The Sahara Desert is, of course, in northern Africa right here. And here's a picture of it. We've got a rainforest right here, grassland, and this is a desert. Huh, I wonder why. Well, here's the deal. The Sahara Desert is the largest desert on Earth. The Sahara Desert has a prevailing wind pattern. The wind almost, almost blows this almost always, actually, I'm missing a word there, blows the same way. The hot wind of the desert cooks the trees on the edge and they die <laughs> And when the air becomes desert. So basically the wind comes off here kind of from the Middle East right here. And if the air mass is blowing across um, land, there's no moisture to, for it to pick up. And so it sends this dry and it's hot because of course the equator is about right here and it just makes the Sahara Desert. Interesting thing is the Sahara Desert is growing at about four miles per year. In the past, it would say this big, and today it's much bigger. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, of course, it's reached the coast. So my assumption is that it's, at uh, future extent, they believe it's headed kind of southward. Yeah. On the other hand, and I've kind of already talked about why is the Amazon basin so wet. Well, guess what? Um, we've got a prevailing wind pattern that's coming this way off of the Atlantic Ocean, picking up a ton of moisture. And yeah, we'll say here's the picture. Take a look. Here's your prevailing wind patterns um, off the coast of Peru or of uh, Brazil. And it comes ahead and it lots of moisture, lots of moisture, lots of moisture, all filling in here. And of course, we've got this band of mountains right through here. And notice the wind keeps blowing this way. And actually, that's the prevailing wind. And it kind of hits over those mountains and, and it, yeah, does it. Wind, too, can have an effect on an area's climate. Depending on from which direction winds blow, they can be either warm or cool. Winds blowing from the tropics carry with them warm air. Similarly, winds blowing from polar regions bring cold air. Water currents can act the same as wind currents by carrying warmth or coolness from one part of the world to another. One example of this is the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream refers to ocean currents that carry warm water from the Gulf of Mexico to places as far north as Norway. Due to the effect of these water currents, even though Norway is located near the Arctic Circle, its climate is warmer than that of most places in the polar regions. Geographers divide the world into six main climatic regions. Tropical, subtropical, temperate, subpolar, polar, and highlands. Each of these climatic regions are defined by both temperature and precipitation. For instance, places with a subtropical climate would be described as having hot, dry summers and cool, rainy winters. Climate has a great impact on people's everyday lives. 
Among other things, it affects what they wear and what kind of houses they live in. People who live in hot climates, for instance, wear very light clothing. But people who live in polar climates, such as Inuits, wear fur or other warm clothing to protect themselves from the cold. Inuits also live in houses that are well insulated to protect against the Arctic air. But people who live in hot climates don't need to worry about insulation. Instead, they might build their houses so that cool breezes can get in. Okay. There's a couple of uh, terms we need to define. The windward side, which is the side facing toward the prevailing wind. These are mountains. And the leeward side, which is the side facing away from the prevailing wind. Huh? All right, so if I have a mountain range, and the prevailing wind is um, from the left to the right, this is called the windward side. And this is the leeward side. Okay, Where we live in Woodland Park, we're actually on the leeward side of the mountains. And so, um, so this would be kind of a picture of how that might look. So um, if Woodland Park is right over here, which is about right, the wind blows this direction, let's say, and um, the clouds, if it's carrying moisture, look at where all the clouds are. You know, lots of clouds right here. And it will pick up lots more rain. Notice there's going to be lots of trees and stuff like that on this side because it has additional moisture, okay? And on this side right here is there's going to be less wind on the leeward side. And this will be drier because, and this is true here in Woodland Park, is we are drier than the other side. We get inches of snow where the other side of the continental divide will sometimes gets feet of snow. All right. In fact, um, when we get our big storms, in fact, as I make this podcast, we had a relatively large storm uh, last weekend. We get our big storms when the wind shifts, and we call it that an upslope. It's going in sort of the backwards directions from what we expect. And that this whole cloud system is going to dump all of its rain and precipitation, whatever, on this side of the mountain and leave this side of the mountain dry. And that's why, of course, what's true over on this side of the mountain, where Colorado Springs and the plains are, it's a relatively dry place because the mountains block the moisture. Okay. Here's another picture. The ascending air cools, all right, as, as this air cools, and it releases the moisture as rain, sometimes snow, and this side tends to be wetter, okay? And then we have this new term we should talk about called the rain shadow. Now, the rain shadow is the portion of the mountain that is basically all the moisture is gone, and this can lead to deserts over on this side in many cases. So if there's not enough moisture, we, we get enough spillover moisture that we stay pretty wet, well, wetter. But in some places, if the mountains are tall enough, you find extremely dry places of the world. All right. Hey, let's take a look at a map of the United States and figure out where it's the sort of the wettest and where it's the least wet. Is that the word? Um, here we are in Colorado, and you can kind of see we're kind of sort of in the oranges, and notice that's kind of the low amounts of precipitation. This is the number of inches we get per year, and the number of inches per year are pretty, pr pretty low, right? We're kind of an orange to a yellow, etc. Now, down here in Florida, they get quite a bit more rain. They're kind of in the greens, 30 to uh, maybe 50 to 60 inches of, of rain or precipitation a year. And then, actually, interesting thing, where's the wettest part of the, of, the, of the continental United States? Interestingly enough, it's up here in the mountains of um, Oregon and Washington. These are very, very wet. In fact, the wettest place is right here at the tip. This is called the Olympic Peninsula. It's actually a rainforest, but it's not a cold, warm rainforest like we think of Amazon, but it's a, a cold rainforest forest. They get a lot of rain. And there's some mountains here, of course, if you don't know. There's the Cascade Range. These are all volcanic stuff. And uh, it kind of traps a lot of the moisture. Some of it then makes it over and makes it a little bit uh, uh, wetter. Okay. Um, I already did that. Okay. So that is the end of the podcast. All right. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.